Okay, got it. We are missing Karim and Rob. So in the interest of time, we can start. And then if they join the meeting, um, they'll participate at that time. Okay. Oh. Oh, thank you for your interest in uh, joining CEC 25. Um, we received your application. Uh, my name is Wing Yu. Also, uh, as you see on my screen, uh, you, uh, you can also call me Wendy. Uh, currently, I am the uh, president uh, of the council. Uh, I have a daughter at PS 107. She's in fourth grade. Um, I'm a returning member from last term. And we're very excited to um, have, have a new member to join us. Um, so uh, can you introduce yourself, um, give us your background, your school affiliation? Absolutely. Well, um, my name is Darlene Malave, as you see on my screen. I live in Corona, Queens. I've been living here since for about seven years, roughly. I uh, am originally born in the Bronx, raised in Long Island. So I have some city school experience as well as um, suburban school experience in my own personal um, academic preparation. Um, I went to medical school in the Dominican Republic and I came here and now, now I am um, finishing a master's in speech language pathology. When it comes to my my two sons, I have uh, I have had them first going to school very briefly uh, in uh, daycare centers in the um, I'm sorry, uh, early learning centers in the Bronx and then uh, in the private school here and eventually in PS 28, which is a, a couple blocks away from where I live. Um, then COVID hit, and now I have uh, my child in PS uh, 499, the Queens College School for Math, Science, Technology. He is mm -hmm. in just starting fifth grade. And then I have a little one in the New York uh, Mosaic Pre-K New York Hall of Science, uh, right in front of the New York Hall of Science in uh, Flushing Meadow Park. Um, I've been very, uh, very happy with that school. And I guess my mother was a teacher for 25 years and she's retired now. So I've always been involved in knowing, you know, certain details um, yeah. of administration and whatnot and how things kind of go in schools. And being also a, you know, a, a graduate student clinician uh, uh, interested in working in, in schools in the future, um, I do have an interest and I have a, my older son is also um special needs he has a ADHD and he receives ICT and you know gets special education at schools so that also something that is uh interests me it's a passion for me to advocate for parents and also um I guess be some sort of a mediator if you will those are things that interests me oh anything else you to me? I don't know oh, thank you. Thank you for your introduction. I think we have some parents on the council with children um, that needs ICT, IEP um, help also, and you'll get to meet them. Actually, in fact, our next uh, week meeting on Wednesday, October 4th, we will be giving a special need education presentation. So hopefully you'll be able to join us. Okay, um, at this time, is there, let me see if anyone else. Okay, Esther came on, oh, Rob came on. Okay, so are we just missing Karen then? Yeah, but you're All right. going now. Okay, so at this time, we're gonna yeah. start with our questions. Hi, I'm uh, here, thanks, sorry. Hi, Esther. How Good evening, are everyone, you? I'm here. Okay, thank you for joining <laughs> us. Good evening. Hello, hello. Okay. okay. So my first question is, um, as a CC uh, 25 member, we represent the parents and the families of District 25. 
we, the council, meet in person once a month, uh, our uh, monthly general meeting uh, where the public is present um, is held at the district office. And then after the general meeting, we have a business meeting among the members only. Uh, we have presentations on issues that affect our district. Uh, we make re recommendations and resolutions. We occasionally have special meeting like the one we're having right now. We make school visits and occasionally we attend school and community events. Now knowing you know, we, I, I know this is a volunteer position and um, our time with our families, with our work, it's you know, very precious. But you know, we do expect members to commit some time every month to the council. So knowing that you know, there's the, all these meetings and occasional events, are there anything that you think may prohibit you from attending or committing to, to the council? Uh, to me personally, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I, I'll, I will be honest. I, I do have some commitments on a weekly basis. Um, the only days that I really have available are Fridays, um, every Friday. So I have four Fridays a month, depending on the month, right? Um, that I have available. Those days I pick up my kids from school and those days, you know, I, I have pretty much the afternoons uh, free because I have one other day during the week to catch up with my graduate assignments and my classes and all of those other days are pretty much uh, full with responsibilities. But Fridays I have, and if if that, if this requires, um, more time than uh, afternoon Friday afternoons, then then I would be, you know, honest enough to step down and and give the position, of course, <laughs> hand hand it over to someone that has more availability. Yeah, our uh, monthly meeting is the first Wednesday uh, of every month in the evening. It starts at seven o'clock at the district office. Would that be a little um? Would you be able to make the in-person meeting, you think? Um, I do have classes Wednesday evenings from 6 to 8.40. So that is, sorry, excuse me, I have a motion detecting light. Um, I Every Wednesday up until the middle of December, I'm going to have classes and they Unless there's an emergency, I do it virtual. But no, I don't. In all honesty, you know, now that you're mentioning that, I didn't know. Um, I would not know. I wouldn't be able to make uh, those in-person meetings at the moment. Um, my participation in class is, has a value, and I'm mm -hmm. giving. It, so yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Next, um, Eden, Eden Rubenstein. Oh, sorry, I was trying to get to the unmute button. <laughs> Hi, Darlene. My name is Eden Rubenstein. I'm a returning member as well to the council, I'm the first vice president this year. My question for you was, what research have you done to prepare yourself for this position should you be chosen to join us? I guess since I became a resident uh, here in Queens of District 24, and I was always very interested in where I would put my son, I've done a lot of, re I feel I've done research on how satisfied parents are with the schools in this district. Um, and I've done research on okay. sites. C-R-L-E-N-E, spell it Darlene. Shirley. You need to mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. I'm sorry. It's it's okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's the research I've done. I've pretty much looked up most of all the schools that I can say in the public dis in the public school district. Um, because uh, in the moment of me placing my own son. That you know wasn't I wasn't satisfied with the schools around where I lived, 
So I did extensive research on parent satisfaction, security, uh, you know, teacher certification, how many qualified teachers were there in, you know, any given school. So uh, gifted and talented programs, all of those things. That was my research pretty much. Um, that's why I was interested pretty much in, in knowing more about schools, about being a part of them, seeing how I can, um, I guess, uh, contribute to the experience that I have talking with people on the scene in the school administration. My husband was the president of the PTA for PS28. And uh, that was something that was a great experience because I was part of that. And I got to speak a lot with the you know members and faculty of administration. Um, so it, it just, I saw a value in the fact that I was bilingual and the fact that I can advocate for many parents. That's That's basically the research that I've done. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Darlene. I'm sorry about before. I was asking my husband, like, D-A-R-L-E-N is Darlene, right? I just don't, didn't want to miss, I don't, I didn't want to make any mistake calling your name. I'm sorry about that before. So my name is uh, Sung. You could call me Shirley. I'm the second vice uh, president of the Education Council. So my question is, in your opinion, what are the top issues about roughly about three that New York City schools are facing currently? Well, one issue I feel would be the, the issue of being prepared uh, security wise. There's always a lot of, I, I feel that what I've heard current parents very concerned with is the security, especially in after school programs, um, there's always an issue of availability of staff and uh, after school is so important for our parents to be able to make their schedules as well as be committed to getting their school, you know, getting their children to school on time and pick them up on time. So I guess the security measures I, I see from my experience, what I know, that would be uh, one topic of concern. Uh, another I would say would be the literature that is being um, available, being, being made available in the libraries of our schools. Um, that was something that I'm personally passionate about. And um, I do understand that there are, maybe there's a, a, a lot of things that are changing in, in terms of that. But from what I know in my experience involving, being involved with the PTA with PS499, and talking with the administrators, um, there's also a concern there of a type of censorship of what should be on the bookshelves of the public li of the libraries in our uh, uh, children's schools, and what should be accessible, and you know what is age appropriate. Those I think that is a concern throughout New York City schools. And the third. I would definitely say hands down would be appropriate uh, additional supports. So, you know, um, ICT services, services, the uh, evaluations, uh, it's no secret. You know, it's been, there's a, a, a shortage, a, a definite uh, lack of efficiency with the city's availability to evaluate children that need um, services, you know, speech language pathology, OT, PT, all those things that um, that you know, a lot of children's IEPs are out of compliance. And I think that is a broad uh, issue throughout New York City schools. That would be the three. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chow, do you have a question? I'm sorry it's taking so long. I'm trying to unmute. Old people act slowly, like sick people. Good evening, darling. Thank you for your interest in um, joining um, uh, joining the CC25. My name is Joseph Chow. I'm a retired assistant principal of mathematics from Francis Louis High School. So my question has to do with, I think I know the answer already, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, what are your opinions on the gifted and talented tests, screen programs in middle school and high school? and the specialized high school admissions test. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Um, I do think personally that there should be some sort of a process. I'm not so sure, in all honesty, that the like there are there is research that testing and you know this is a big issue right all the way up in Albany as to whether a test measures exactly everything a student has to offer. Um, in my opinion, I do think that the process that is in place, a process needs to be in place in order to screen children and see who belongs and who is you know, apt to, to be in a gifted and talented uh, program. Um, there's many applicants and there's few that enter because there's I mean, this is a huge, an, an enormous district. Um, I do think a process needs to be in place, but I would definitely say that just as our society changes and people change, administrations change in the district, I do think that it is necessary to revise those procedures, those, those testing processes um, for, I wouldn't say each borough, but I would say that it shouldn't be one standard for everyone. There should be things to be taken you know, into consideration, like socioeconomic status and things of that nature and, and so forth, because, well, the truth is, I think that it's, it's different. And those things should be taken into matter and adjusted so that we can appropriately screen and really give an, a widespread opportunity to all those that do qualify for a gifted and talented program. I hope I answered your question. I know that was perhaps vague. I, I, I agree with the process. I just think that revision is needed. That's good. So much. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Rob. Bob, are you on? Yes, I'm on. <clears throat> Hi, Great, thank Wendy. you for joining us. Yeah. Hi, I apologize for uh, joining uh, uh, late. Uh, so Darlene, it's I apologize okay. for that. Um, so thank you again for, uh, as the others have expressed, thank you for expressing your interest. It is a volunteer job. So um, to have anyone that's willing to give up their time on a volunteer basis for uh, uh, for the greater good of the children, that's uh, that's awesome. So so thank you for that. Um, and I, I'm going to just play a little bit of catch up because I missed your introduction. Um, I heard you said you you're bilingual. Um, what what languages uh, do you speak? I am fluent in Spanish. I read and write. I understand it. Okay. I yeah. Okay, great. So Spanish and then presumably English. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, thank you. Um, and then you mentioned your ch child is in, in PS 499? Correct. And, and and again, I apologize. Where, where and I probably should know this, but where is uh, 499? That is right on the campus of Queens College. It's okay. located right on the, on the same campus. As Queens College. Okay, fine. So um, like, uh, I guess Townsend Harris is also on uh, right across Queens. yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay all right i i know where that is gotcha okay so i, I have perspective thank you um so um my question is um um as you've already identified that you have um limited time as, as frankly all of us have limited time and i was late and i apologize for that um uh, again in an expression of limited uh limited amounts of time if there was one thing that you would change that you would make your mission or you'd want to impact in the system because i think there's you know, lots of things that you know the system could be improved um but um i know we can't all get them all done uh, but if you were going to devote your effort to something what would be your passion your mission that uh that you would want to leave as your hallmark of how you left the system better than when you found it that's a very good question. Uh, there's so many things that I'm passionate about. And uh, I guess I would tackle one that I feel could could be solved. There are many things that uh, I think that would be more than a challenge. So many things would have to change for us to be uh, in agreement on major issues like the ones I'm thinking of. But if I could pick one, I would say the 
the need to have better evaluation services for the children um, that are in need for the tier one, tier two, tier threes, that um, that screening uh, for, for children all throughout. I believe there needs to be more availability of professionals that are that work under the Department of Education. I'm sorry, excuse me. The Department of Education um, to be available to keep uh, the IEPs of uh, the children of New York City in public schools, right, and in, in compliance and have that availability there. It's I believe that there's more than more than uh, enough resources to allocate to to do that. So I feel being you know, a future speech language pathologist that I'm very likely going to be part of the system. Um, I feel that that would be something that I would be most passionate in dedicating my time to. Terrific. Well, thank you so much, uh, Darlene. I appreciate that. Thank you for your input. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for your question. Um, let me see. I don't think Kiram is on, so we are going to move on to Alvin. Hi, Darlene. Uh, I'm Alvin Hung, and I'm a newly elected uh, CEC parent member of uh, District 25. Uh, welcome to tonight's uh, meeting. And my question to you is, uh, before Shirley was mentioning about like the three things that you Feel, uh, needs to be stress uh, for our community. Uh, my question is, what strategies would you use in order to be successful in implementing or stressing those needs that you would use, um, maybe talking to the parents of District 25 or even to, uh, to our meetings? What strategies would you use? That's a good question. Um, and thank you so much for the warm welcome. I do think that making parents aware in district meetings, bringing these issues to the forefront with parents that are there in the moment interested, but also widening this awareness. Um, I guess blast emails, you know, I, 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 at least being, being a student myself, I see how wide communications, you know, just are, administrated um, you know rapidly and to make sure that students get awareness right and and oh of these events or whatnot I feel we can do the same thing with the parents of our students and you know make them aware of the services and the needs and the issues that they'd like to become aware of we can do polls you know there are I feel that we can use these this social media we can use uh, what we already have in order to bring up this heightened awareness of the things that we'd like to bring, these issues, um, that would be one one strategy. So blast emails, um, doing these district meetings. I do think that because of availability and time, people find it you know very, very limited availability. Maybe people would like to get more involved and they just don't have the time. But quick polls and email blasts, I think that most you know, I think people can contribute at least with offering their opinion and what they'd like. And what, what, what would they, what, excuse me, what would they like to see change? And uh, I think that that's valuable. There is value in knowing what our parents are interested in and what are, what are the needs of the community? Um, that would be one strategy. Was there, a, do I have to give you two or three more or a few more, <laughs> maybe? That's fine. But I guess that one of, uh, the, uh, our position as volunteer parent members of CDC is to hopefully engage with all the students and all the parents of all the schools in the district, not just one. Right. So uh, this question is kind of for like how would you collectively try to hopefully communicate with the parents? Um, I guess that would definitely be something, I mean, if it would be district-wide, right? All these schools and all these districts, I believe the district meetings are a good place to bring, you know, PowerPoints, to bring, um, 
uh, speak about it, actually say something about it and do the verbal communication um, and invite parents, you know, be approachable, be someone that people can feel comfortable that they can come to and, uh, you know, availability, email me anytime, you know, so, you know, five days a week or something or seven days a week there, you know, to allow people to be able to, to trust and confide maybe the things that they'd like to talk about me to, I, I would like for this to be come up, you know, to talked about at the meeting, uh, allow people to, to share their insight. I think, I guess the district meetings would be a good time and place to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Okay. And last but not least, Frank. Frank, please unmute yourself. Um, can you speak in? You're somewhat unclear. You mean? Oh. Yes, it's very low. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Uh, what's your question? No, uh, I mean, we pretty much answered quite a lot of questions. So I don't have any questions at this moment. Okay. All right. Okay. So Frank doesn't have any question. Um, Darlene, is there anything you uh anything else that you want to add, uh, or let us uh tell us about yourself that you think would be you want us to know when we make our decision? Um, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, you you've been answering these questions very well, by the way. Oh, I've been trying. I wasn't I wasn't exactly um super duper prepared. I was just gonna be open, honest, and yes. maybe transparent. You know, I'm not yes. going to um having been part of other PTAs, I know the value and what we contribute as parents to our children's schools to be something part of something bigger, I believe is a mm -hmm. big responsibility. And I just want to be transparent that I am working on something and I, uh, that I am a mom that I, that I work on weekends, you know, that's mm -hmm. my situation, but I do feel that something I can contribute and, and that's my availability. I hope it is, um, if it is a deal breaker, then I hope that at, uh, at some other, you know, time, uh, you know, when I have a, a, you know, a different availability, I can be a part of it, but that I have an interest, that I have a passion, that I am already someone that's going to be involved in schools, um, particularly in New York City, which is planned to, you know, where I plan to stay. Um, it, it's just something that I think that would be an asset to know about, to, to be, to bring perhaps, um, uh, things that I hear, that I know, that I see in my own profession and personally uh, to share with. And hopefully that can contribute to to helping other students, other families in our, make make the system better. Yeah, I can see the passion. Thank, thank you for being honest and being transparent. I We appreciate that. And, you know, um, you know, we hope hope that even if you're unable to you know join as a member you can participate and um, come to our meetings um, absolutely yeah that would be great um i think at this time i don't think there's any other questions from the members we thank you again for your interest and your time uh, uh carly uh will reach out to you um and the the board member will um will discuss um in the business meeting um uh, about whether to welcome you as a new member so thank you um we'll reach out to you soon okay. thank you very much darling thank you
It was a pleasure to meet all of you. Thank you for being so warm and welcome. Bye, Shirley. <laughs> Thank you, Dali. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Dali. Okay. So we have the, uh, the, the other members here. Okay. Um, so didn't Carly so, say that we should stop the recording? Um, now yeah, give me in. one second. And let we me have some numbers on this issue. Oh, you're calling me right. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, we oh. will leave the vote, the, uh, the voting uh, for next Wednesday at the general meeting. I'll send Alvin a message in our group thing that I have. Um, yeah, I have typed it right now. Oh, you got it, Rob? Yep. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. coming on tonight. And I hopefully will see you all next week. Please <laughs> let Carly know um, ahead of time whether you'll be present or uh, won't be able to make it. Um, I I will be in person. So will I. Okay. I'll be in person as well. Okay. Do we know of anyone that's not able to make it next week or? Just pulling up the calendar. I expect to be there. Just give me a second to pull oh, up the calendar. And please look at your emails for the school visits. So I can complete. Yes. Them. Yeah. So it's on the it's fourth. It's a lot of them. It gets a little overwhelming. I know. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I'll be there in person. Okay, great. So, all right. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening, everybody. All right. Good thank night. you. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Bye, everybody. Good night, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye.